This is what we're building today. I just think it looks really cool. What are some of the techniques that creative coders use to create cool things like this? Stick around until the end for a discussion on that. Also stick around for ideas on variations to this project where you can animate certain elements or change colors, change shapes. Stay tuned to the end for that. If you're just getting started with 3JS and you want a solid foundation, check out Learn 3JS Basics. I want to give a big shout out to Exponent. Visit tryexponent.com to ace your next technical interview. Let's get started by switching to the start branch. Get check out start. Boom. Okay. I don't need that cube to animate anymore. Let's stop it from animating. I don't need the background sprites anymore. Instead of the background sprites, I'll use this cube. We'll call it a BG cube instead. This will be our background for the scene. Let's make this less generic. Box Geo and Box Mat. Now this is going to be inverted. So the side is equal to three dot backside, like so. It's an inside out box. And let's make it bigger. Um, I think 50 is good. Let's do it like this. Size, size, size. That size is 50. Okay, it's filling up our whole scene. Let's give it something more interesting than that. What do we have here? Let's put um, let's put a shader on here. So instead of a mesh standard material, let's call in a shader material. And we can still have a color property. We can still have the side property, but we're going to add in uniforms, which in this instance is nothing. But then we're going to have the Fragment shader and the vertex shader. Let's load those up so this doesn't explode. Const fragment shader equals await fetch. Oh, wow, look at that. That's interesting. It could work that way. Let's stick with this. Let's duplicate that and call this vertex shader. And this is vert. And we'll use both of those and so let's see if that works. And it just works like that. Inside the project already exists this shader. You want to look at the shader? I do. So the vertex shader is super simple. I'm just passing the UV over. I create this varying, which says, hey, there's, there's this property that I want to share with the vertex shader. And then I assign the UV to that VUV. In the fragment shader, I declare that VUV. And here I use it to lay out a bunch of randomness, like so. If I wanted to, I could boop, boop, and call these floats instead. Hang on. And all of these guys are floats. And we'll assign them R, a random R value, a random G value, and a random B, RGB. And now I could say vec3, vec R, comma, G, comma, B. And I'll have nothing changed. Interesting. Oh, I can give it this. Oh, I need to make those floats. My bad. Okay. Now you have a multicolor randomness. Why does this work? I don't know. But isn't it cool? Let's, let's, let's just go back to what we had before. Yeah, this. Which is a black and white pattern. And I can increase this, this line here. I'm determining the grid size. So if I made this 90, we'd have a bunch of tiny little spots. Like so. So those are the shaders that we just applied to our, our background. Isn't that nice? Great. Now we have our background. Let's put some stuff inside this thing. I'm going to create a box geometry. I already have a box geometry. Let's B geo equals a new three dot box geometry. And cons B mat is going to be a mesh physical material with no roughness, uh, full transmission properly. And this is going to determine the refractiveness. I'm going to make that 0 0.5 to start out with. And it's transparent. I don't think we need that, actually. And let's create a mesh. Const B mesh 
is equal to a new three dot mesh and pass in those guys and then add it to the scene. Don't forget to add it to the scene. So now we have a single box and it's got this cool refractive quality. Let's increase the thickness to one and now it's gonna refract more. I don't know if you can tell the difference. And so the next thing I wanna do now that I have that box is create a bunch of those boxes. Let's wrap this code in a function declaration or expression. I think it's declaration. Get box. And it's instead of scene.add, we're just going to return it, that mesh, like so. Format it on my, on my Mac OS machine, shift option F to format the code. It, it helps that I have this plugin installed to, to format things prettier. All right, now I have this get box method. The box is gone, but I could say this and then add that to the scene and the box is back. But now I can loop over this. I can say const num boxes equals, let's start with 10. And then say for let i to equal zero, while i is less than num boxes, i plus equals one and do this. But instead of adding it to the scene, let's add it to the scene group. Okay, or scene container, which we haven't defined. Let's move up above our background stuff and call this const scene group equals a new group and add it to the scene. I want to give it an, uh, the nice thing about modularizing your scene this way is that y you can just write a single update method scene group dot user data dot update. And it'll take care of all your updating stuff. Like for example, I can do that. Great. And now if I call it here, scene group dot user data dot update. Now the scene's going to move around. Only the cube is in there right now. Let's add the, the BG cube to it too. Scene group. Now this, the BG cube will move too. Right? One box looks really cool. Let's add a bunch of boxes. Oh, I, I, sorry. <laughs> I already did that. I didn't plan this. But um, bmesh dot position dot set. Um, let's, a bunch of random values. That's going to be the easy way. Let's start with that. Save. And there they are, randomly distributed. I zoom out, you can see them all. Uh, I kind of hate this. It doesn't seem readable to me. Whereas if I said X comma Y comma Z, it's more readable. And mm, these are the values I had a moment ago. Same exact thing. Let's call this range, this value here. And it's minus range times 0 0.5. That way we can, when we load it up, say range equals 30. Oh, now we're doing 30. I'm still not using this index. I'm going to leave it there for now. I don't, I don't need this. Okay. 30 is too big. What if I said three? They're all kind of clustered in the middle. Yeah, now we can see them all easily. I want to increase the number of boxes to 100, and then I'll increase the range. Now there's just one giant block in the middle. Increase the range to, how about 30? Okay. I like the look of that. I think the, either the boxes are too small. Maybe I want to have some variation in the size of the boxes. So range is 30. Let's say const um, scale is equal to math.random. So between 2 and 0 0.1, that won't work for me. But it should be at least 1 and as high as 3. So let's try that. bmesh 
dot scale dot set scalar scale. Let's try that. Now there's variation in the size of those cubes. Not quite enough though. I think I need more boxes too. 200. I think that's the right amount. With this setup, there's lots of variations you could try out to experiment with and see what looks cool to you. But I want to add color to each box. And because each has its own material, they're not sharing a material, I can just change the color. This is a little sloppy, but thank you, GitHub Copilot. It gets us moving in the right direction. Okay. I would, I think, for maintainability and sanity, I would want to declare this separately. Like that. I think I need either more boxes or bigger boxes. Try to change up some of the things, like make this a sphere geometry instead, or an icosphere, icosahedron geometry. And if you leave it blank, the defaults are one and zero, I think. Let's make them nice and smooth. One comma six. Now they'll be nice spheres. Yeah, so there's that. I don't know if I like this though. Maybe if you uh, kill the color. Is that cool? I mean, it's kind of cool. I think I like the boxes better. You can play around with this roughness property. If you turn it up, you'll, you'll get these kind of this frosted look, which I think is sort of cool. It does look cooler now. Um, turn the color back on. I do like that because of the roughness. You could reduce the roughness, make it more transparent, or you can crank the roughness up. Now they're, they're fully opaque. That's pretty terrible. I think if you reduce the transmission, they get darker. Yeah. Oh, I neglected something. There's a light in the scene that we're not really using. I could just remove it like so. Because the shader material is not calculating light, nor is the mesh physical material, this is what you get. I'll turn up that transmission again. Well, what happens if you get 50? Okay. They're like kind of glowy. And play with the thickness. If you drop it to zero, they, they're like, they're just like little colorful things. They don't actually um, refract at all. I kind of like that too. Um, let's put it back to boxes. Box geo. And it's going to be size, 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 right? No, they're all just default size. Okay. Turn the thickness up to one. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, more boxes? What do you guys think? What if I went absolutely insane and had 3,000 boxes? It's kind of a mess. 300 seemed to be a pretty good number. Okay. Uh, reset. Hard. Check this out. Get check out main. You could also use a texture on the background, like I did here. This is a curl noise, a flow field illustration that I created using P5.js. And then you can animate the different shapes moving around. I think this is a cool effect. Here's my get object. And I've got, the, I'm kind of checking on this probability variable and determining the type of geometry based on that and also varying the roughness and the thickness. I don't really see that very much though. It's pretty subtle. Let's, let's really crank up the roughness and also the thickness too. The thickness between zero, two and zero. Now it's really noticeable. That's cool. 
Oh, except when it's, when it's, there's no thickness, it's kind of sucky. I've got some lights in this scene. I don't know if we really need them. They just offer a little highlight if you add it. Okay, this looks cool. I hope this was helpful to you. Take the basic parameters of this project and tweak them. Apply different textures to that background cube. Or, um, gosh, you could use environment lighting. You could uh, apply a shader to the background, but use an animated shader. I think that would be a really cool effect. Um, what else could you do? You could go to shadertoy.com and pull a shader from there and use that in this project. You could move the camera along a camera path. You could use physics. Holy smokes, wouldn't that be cool? Some of the things, um, kind of principles of creative coding that we touched on today are kind of modularity in your code. Kind of when I created that get box method, in this case, get object. Um, it's all, it's kind of bundled up in there. Um, we talked about using shaders. Woohoo! The mesh physical material, as you can see, offers this cool refractive effect. And it's a really powerful material with lots of other properties like metalness, um, for example, that is definitely worth exploring more. We talked about the randomization, setting that random X, Y, and Z position. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, also leave a comment. Thank you so much for coming by and I'll see you in the next one.